We are back at the Information Week News Desk, coming to you live from Interop in Las Vegas. I'm Sarah Peters. Now, our next guest leads Cisco's Enterprise Infrastructure and Solutions Group. This morning, he gave a keynote speech about how a business can transform with digital network architectures, and now he's here with us. Jeff Reed, welcome. Thank Hi, you for Sarah. being Thanks here. For happy to be here. Um, now, you talked about uh, well, you talked about a lot of things, but one of them that I'm really interested in is Cisco DNA. So tell me what that is and what it means. Sure, so Cisco DNA is the new uh, digital network architecture. And it's really about two things that we see happening in, in, in networking in the industry as a whole. One is the ability for the network to fundamentally change how businesses operate, to become digital businesses. Mm -hmm. and, and we think that we're in a new, unique time where the network has never been so critical as it is now in terms of helping the line of business. The other piece of the digital network architecture, so that's kind of why it matters. Uh -huh. And then the digital network architecture itself, what we've done is try to harness a lot of the, the technology that we've been talking about in networking for the past five years, SDN, NFE, et cetera, mm -hmm. in a way that's consumable and really we think delivers real outcome to, to users. Well, there's a couple things you said there that, that intrigued me. One of them is this whole digital business thing because truly, every business is saying, oh, there's so many businesses I hear that say, oh, we're, we're a we're digital, digital business. Yeah, we're, yeah. we're an IT business from, uh, you know, in, 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 in any industry that you can yeah. think of. But I don't know that they really know we're, what that sure. means and what that entails. From what you're seeing, um, are, are most businesses really ready to prepare to consider them, are, are, there, are they calling themselves digital businesses but they aren't really, <laughs> do they really know what that means? What's the, I, I think what's the status? Are, I guess I, to me it's not, it's not really black and white. Uh -huh. Yeah, I think it's a, it's a progression. I think most companies are early in the journey, okay. frankly. Um, and even Cisco, you know, we, we recently brought in a uh, chief digital officer at Cisco to help with things and transforming you know, our relationship with customers, how we do our back-end processes, and oh, things like that. So, I so I think, you know, even, and I, I think that we're re relatively progressive being Cisco. Yeah, um, definitely. So I think, I think every company is probably somewhere on that, on that journey. Now, with the Cisco DNA, you mentioned there that there's a bunch of different technologies, like SDN, which we've been hearing about now, we've been talking about it now for, for years, yeah. but it doesn't quite seem like we're at the point where, where we've, where we've implemented a whole lot of it. Yeah, am I am I making that up? Uh, totally agree. Okay, so so why is that, and how are you guys going to help us get a little further? Yeah, well, I think, I think two reasons as to why. One is, I think some of the very initial SDN, say you know, thoughts and and desire were, were relatively narrow use cases. Frankly, I think they, they okay. impacted some companies in some areas, some networks, but not a lot. And, and so I think that was part of it, just it wasn't as broadly applicable as it, it could be. And the other is just making SDN, it, it takes time. And you know, we've been working on the, the SDN controller as kind of at the heart of what we're doing in, in DNA. Mm -hmm. and it's been a few years, and it's because as we, we got down this process, we realized this has got to be a platform, it's got to be extensible. We wanted to build it so that we could take it to customers' existing networks. So it had to support older devices right, and right. building that piece out. And so part of it, I think, has just been uh, like it's a fair amount of work to get to a point where I think we can deliver something we feel that can be a building block for networking like, going forward in the next five to 10 years. But that, that said, I think we're there. Okay, so then at, at there's certain use cases maybe that we, which use cases are we there with, yeah, with the sure. Cisco DNA. Absolutely. Where do you see it going in the not too distant future? Yeah, so let me, let me highlight a few use cases I think we're there. Uh -huh. um, so one's around automation and simplicity driven by the controller. Examples of that are just device plug and play. You know, how do you like basically install network devices without having to touch them? We call it zero touch deployment. Um, just automate that whole so part. Great. It's, yeah. <laughs> it really uh, so does sound like a dream. Um, that's why you know, some of these things are hard. And, and how do you support that? What is the, the agent on the device needs to be improved? And all that work has gotten us there. Uh, you, we have customers that are building off just the, the core technologies around inventory and topology and path tracing and kind of building applications on that. So there's kind of a set of things around kind of the automation piece that are there. 
Another use case we're seeing a lot is, is a couple actually analytics use cases as part of the TNA story. Uh, so one's around security. So using the, the visibility from the network and basically delivering that to security analytics you know, software application ah. to, to identify where are there advanced persistent threats, things that you can you can only tell from like behavioral analysis of traffic and behaviors along those lines. Oh, that's exciting. And then the third one, another one in the analytics area is that using uh, Wi-Fi and location-based information to help us understand how are people walk, going through an environment. And so I talked about this morning, I talked about a, a mall that we're working with where they've used their Wi-Fi and the location information coming off of that to optimize their, basically where their tenants go and figure out, you know, where can they charge higher rents? Where should they be charging lower ah. rents? And things like that. Because they, they understand actually where, where traffic's across the mall is likely to go. Yeah, I mean, I could see that that kind of thing could, could be used also for physical security purposes physical security. and also just for, for better performance. Well, of, real of estate, we, we, you know, we, we redesigned all of our engineering floors at Cisco. And not all engineering teams are the same. You know, my, the hardware guys have a different work style and what they do than software guys and yeah. product management, et cetera. And so we've actually, we actually used the, the information from that as we did the floor redesigns in terms of occupancy, huh. how much open space versus medium rooms and things like that that we didn't do before. So it's in use at Cisco yourself and Absolutely. you're already, and that, that's gotta be a great way to discover new use cases on your yeah, own. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, look, we're at um, Interop 30 years. Before I let you go, I have to ask, what has excited you about IT in the past 30 years and what do you see coming in the future? That's a tough one. I All know, right. I know, um, I'm putting you on the spot. Look, I mean, to me, the internet, what can you say? Yeah, I know, I mean, you it's, can't it's really. It's kind of like, does ever, kind of like, you know, I look at my household, my children and my wife, and we're online all the time. We've kind of changed how we live every day. And then looking forward, um, I'm not a car guy. I drive very cheap, poorly washed cars, <laughs> but I am all in on self-driving vehicles. So it's, really? I will be an early adopter there as soon as they let me. <laughs> So that's what I'm looking forward to. Well, I, uh, that's very interesting. You're the first person I've, oh, there goes my pen. You're the first person I've met who has been that excited about self-driving cars. So I'm excited, I, I'm excited to meet I've you. I've got a long commute, so yeah, that's part of the process. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm really been excited about my speak and spell. <laughs> nobody, nobody here that I've been ta talking to remembers the speak and spell, but I had it. 30 years ago, and then I became an editor, and my spelling is exemplary. So, IT, you thank you for all of that. And well, I like the fact that spell check exists. Yeah, That's see, I don't even need it. I am better. Okay. I am better, better than spell check. Jeff Reed, thank you so Thanks, much. Sarah. It's been a Appreciate pleasure it. having you here. Jeff Reed from Cisco. Well, my dears, that's it. That's all. That wraps up our broadcast here at the 30th Annual Interop. We hope you enjoyed what we brought your way. And if you missed anything, don't fret because we will be posting those interviews one by one on the Interop website after the event is over. So keep your eyes peeled as those will start popping up soon. Now, for everyone from Interop, Information Week, Network Computing, and Dark Reading, I thank you for joining us. Until next time, I'm Sarah Peters saying here's to another 30 years. We'll see you in 2017.